Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. I'm Susie, also known as Crypto Girl, and I've been trading crypto for about five years. And I have on the line with us tonight, or today actually, this morning maybe, uh, Joe, and he is the creator of the overlays that we are all using, which is the radar and the crypto mastery indicators. So today we're going to go over some news, very exciting things I found for you guys, the overall market, some hot movers in the basket. Uh, we'll look at the crypto screen of review. We'll look at the indicators and most importantly, your question and answers. So gear up that questions box and you can be putting them in the box as I'm going through these quick slides. And in about 10 minutes, we'll be talking to you and looking at the market live. So the first article I found for you guys is seven best metaverse crypto coins to buy in 2022 by Mark on nulltx.com. The first one is Mines of Dalarnia, D-A-R. It's a second, a, a 2D, sorry, a 2D NFT based blockchain game involving users mining assets and using the native D-A-R tokens to upgrade their equipment and characters. Mines of Dalarnia, D-A-R, has a market cap of $224 million. Radio Kaka, R-A-C-A, is one of the leading metaverse ecosystems consisting of its USM metaverse, the United States of Mars, an NFT marketplace, a DAO DAO, and its flagship NFT based play to earn game, Metamon. Radio Kaka, R-A-C-A, has a market cap of $319 million as of today. Wax, W-A-X-P, also known as the Worldwide Asset Exchange, is a specialized metaverse and NFT blockchain platform built for next generation crypto applications and games. Wax, W-A-X-P, has a market cap of $428 million. Axie Infinity, AXS, is one of the pioneers in play-to-earn metaverse and NFT-based games that was one of the first games to enable players to earn a significant income from playing the game. Axie Infinity, AXS, has a market cap of, ready, $1.8 billion. The fifth one is The Sandbox, S-A-N-D is the third most valued metaverse crypto coin on the market with a capitalization of over $2.5 billion. It's one of the most funded products with influential groups like SoftBank investing over 90 million into Sandbox Metaverse in November of 2021. And number six is Decentraland, MANA, M-A-N-A. -A. It's the second most valued metaverse project and is a is our personal favorite, and this is from the people that wrote the article on this list. It features the most popular metaverse with the most users, making it a must watch in May of 2022. Decentraland, M-A-N-A, -A, has a $2.8 billion market cap. And seventh on the list is ApeCoin, A-P-E is currently the most valued metaverse crypto coin with over 4.38 billion market capitalization. Since its inception two months ago, Ape surpassed every other metaverse coin speaking to the tremendous potential in community supporting surrounding this project. The next part of the news is about stocks and bonds. Paul Tudor Jones bets on Bitcoin V versus stocks and bonds due to massive new rate hike. It's by U.Today. There's a disclaimer that comes with this article. The opinion expressed here is not investment advice. It is provided for informational purposes only. And here's the article. As the U.S. Federal Reserve has been discussing raising interest rates by half of a percent point, the biggest hike in 20 years, billionaire Paul Tudor Jones has stated that it may be a bad idea to own stocks and bonds, but he still believes in Bitcoin and crypto. 
In his interview with CNBC Squawk Box show, he shared that he still holds Bitcoin and is bullish on it. Preservation of capital is the only possible thing now. Paul Tudor Jones has referred to the inflation that hit the U.S. throughout the 1970s. Back then, it first reached 5.5% and then gradually rose to 14.4% and rolled back slightly only in 1980. Back then, Jones says there were no assets that were able to bring any positive returns, not even gold. The investor has shared that stocks and bonds are the last thing to hold these days and the only possible thing to try and strive for is to preserve one's capital, trying to lose as little as possible during rising inflation. This year, it has already reached 7%. He stressed that most likely, currently, we have entered another rare period when it will hardly be possible to make money on the market. We're in one of the most very difficult periods where simply capital preservation is the most important thing we can strive for. I don't know if it's going to be one of those periods where you'll actually trying to make money. It's hard to not want to be long on crypto. When asked by the host whether he is still long on crypto, Jones admitted that he is still modestly invested and believes that the current rate hikes are going to ensure a bright future for his crypto investment. And lastly, on the lighter side of things, I just want to let you know, luxury fitness club Equinox starts accepting crypto payments in New York City by Anushri Dave on theblockcrypto.com. And just so you guys know, I was a member of Equinox down in Greenwich, Connecticut. So this is kind of like coming home to me. I thought this is amazing. This is a high-end fitness club. Equinox will accept payments with cryptocurrency in New York City starting today. The club is partnering with crypto payment services provider, provider BitPay so that customers can purchase an annual membership using cryptocurrency. Members will be able to use any of the coins that BitPay supports. Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ether, Wrapped Bitcoin, Litecoin, Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, or one of five US dollar pegged stable coins. More than ever, consumers are making luxury purchase through cryptocurrency and offering cryptocurrency as a form of payment enables Equinox to continue to meet their community where they are, the company said in a statement. So that is a big move. Very exciting. Equinox is a very high line, very expensive gym. And um, so it's definitely a luxury gym. You should check them out. All right. So now let's check out the overall market. What matters to us? We're going to look at Bitcoin and Ethereum. But first, we're going to sneak peek into the overall market. So in the last six weeks, we've seen the market cap go from 1.7 to 1.8 to 2.5 to back to 1.9 to 1.8 now back at 1.7 so it just seems like we're just um in a wave i will say i wanted to um update this chart so you guys could see the i darkened different lines and um meaning like thickened certain lines on this chart so i don't mean to confuse your brain i wanted it to be more apparent so you could see where most of the money was centered around in the last week but truthfully it looks like an equal battle of up and down so i i made that central line pretty thick so you could see 1.75 which is kind of where we're around right now and um i do want to point out that on this chart in the beginning of the week so this is a seven day analysis chart it was 1.8 trillion and notice how it just just very quickly dipped down and came back. And I want you to know if you have some stop losses, um, that kind of movement could take you out. So just be very careful if you're going along with your investments, having a stop loss um, in some treacherous times like this could just take you out. And the purpose is, is to stay in long. So, you know, I would say just put stuff, can't give you financial advice, period. I just can't. But I would say don't put anything in the market that you, that you cannot, um, lose but in that intention you know put something in the market that you intend to grow long long term also that way it can um 
it can remain during these uh, these incidental dips, these these momentary dips, because you can see right there where the little mini arrow is pointing to. That's a dip, and and that's a dangerous dip if you have stop losses. If you don't have stop losses, but it, on the flip side, if you have buy-ins, that would be pretty exciting. So if you just put like, oh, I'll buy when it dips down that low, then chicken, chicken, winter dinner, you're in. <laughs> you scooped it up as a great price, and you made immediate, you know, immediate money. So um, take the information with however you want to use it, but you could potentially put a buy order in pretty low, so you may be able to scoop one up for these uh, momentarily dips. All right, so for the most part, we're maybe, um, you know, between 1.8 and 1.7 trillion, all right? Um, but in the long run, it's way better than we were in 2018, 19, 20. So collectively, it, it keeps on moving up, all right? So I'm excited about the market. This is a great buy time. All right, now we have coin360.com. This is my favorite site for my visual learners. And what this is, is what you're looking at is a seven day market cap performance chart and it's in market cap block size. So what that means is the squares are reflecting on how much money in overall crypto land on a percentage basis is invested in that particular asset. So Bitcoin, on the bottom of the Bitcoin box, it says dominance 41.15%. That just means that of all the overall money in crypto land, 41% of it is invested in Bitcoin. Super exciting, right? That gives it somewhat um, stability, if you could say there's any stability in crypto, which is what makes it exciting. If there was buy, no buys and sells, nobody would be making money. So um, it's a good thing. The movement is good and it's exciting as long as you can catch the waves. And then you have, so Bitcoin is like the king of crypto land. And then you have Ethereum, and that's the second largest box, which is the second largest market cap. And no other coins actually show the percentage of dominance that they have in this particular chart, but you can see it by the size. You also notice like some of the bigger box sizes are USDT, USDC, the green ones you see right now. And that's a great way to identify the stable coins. Because what happens, and when the markets are going down, people are what I call perching their profits. So they're selling their Bitcoin or their Ethereum, and they're putting it in a stable coin so that it's, the money stays at a dollar. And then when Bitcoin drops to the floor, they'll scoop it back up at a lower price, and then they'll continue the, the buy low, sell high cycle. So one of the things I want you to know, the other part of this, um, Coin360, that's so amazing, is you can organize this um, to visually show your gainers and your losers. So what they did is they color coded the coins that are or tokens that are losing money. And so the dark red represents three different shades. So the dark red means the price went down about three steps. The, and, and the example I have for you on that is AVAX. Um, looks like it went down 16%. And this is in seven days, okay? So it's a seven day down step by 16%. So you can look at this as a positive perspective or a bad perspective. I'm super excited because um, if you're following the indicators, you would have had sold by now, right? So you'd have a bunch of USD on the side or some stable coin waiting to get back in so now evax on, is on super sale so my eyes love the dark red because i know that that's going to hit a floor soon and that's when i'm going to scoop it up when it goes so so low and then i'm going to let it rise to dark green but we're not to dark green yet so hang tight the medium red means the price went down two steps so bitcoin is where that arrow is going to right now so that that medium green that medium red color is showing you Bitcoin is down two steps. It's not a dark red yet. If once Bitcoin hits dark red, ding, 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 that's a great time to buy. Just for my visual learners, if you just cannot stand charts or numbers. Okay, and then you have light, and I can't give you financial advice, so you got to just, you know, do analysis, use charts. But light red means it's the first step down. So BNB, which is Binance Coin, is down 
five, seven percent, and that's the light red color. Okay, so now you have the dark green, and these should be indicators. And when you have a dark green, you need to know, okay, time to take profit. So dark green, I would say mentally, just engrave in your mindset, it's a payday. What am I gonna sell? When am I gonna sell? When you see a dark green, you should be thinking, when am I gonna take profit? Okay, so each color coding has a different mindset or action that needs to be taken. So currently right now, the dark green one is so small, it's under other tokens. I'd have to open that box to see exactly which that one that was. And most likely, I, I probably don't own that one because it's in such a little dinky market cap zone that would have been high risk. So don't know what that one is right now, but you, you can deep dive into that. The medium green one is Tron TRX. That is the medium green color. And then the light green color, you can see that with the stable coins, but FRAX is one of the light greens. All right, so that's the Coin360 today. Just know, guys, as, as the market goes down all at once, get ready because this just means that it's all going to go up all at once okay and i was just talking to joe and he said that there is going to be um another meeting you know the monthly meeting about the interest rates so uh we'll talk to joe in a minute and ask him a little bit more about that which could uh flip some switches okay so now let's deep dive into some charts so for my moon streamers that have the radar, this is the radar you have. So this is Bitcoin USD one week performance chart with the radar indicator. On the upper left hand side, I put a little quote box. It says it turns one chart into four charts and the lower right hand side, you'll see the radar indicator. And in that indicator, you'll see 240 star and that means four hours. So it stands for 240 minutes. And what the trend arrow is telling you that in the four hour chart on a four hour analysis, currently the price is going down. But on a one day average, over all the time in one day in a 24 hour period, it's going up. But on a one week average, it's going down and a one month average Bitcoin is going down. So ideally, this is one of those things, unless you're intraday trading, you know, doing nothing is doing something. You may just want to wait, let it hit the floor, and then wait until you have all signs on deck that are pointing in the upward direction so you can ride that wave. And we always say, pigs get fat, but hogs get slaughtered. So even though you may not sell it at the highest price that it happens, at least you made some profit. So be a pig, but don't be a hog. Okay, hope that makes sense to you guys. Okay, now here is the Bitcoin USD one week chart with crypto mastery indicators. This first one, I call it like my Houdini. It's like a magic trick. The early reversal indicator. And this is a one week analysis, okay? So the early reversal is saying, or did say a few weeks back that, Bitcoin is going to go down. And what did it do? Look at it. It went down. So that's when you say, all right, we're not time to get in yet. Now, the trend indicator, you can see where I put the arrow. The There's no numbers. There's no bell. There's no key. It's just continuing to move down. So you just wait. And doing nothing is so important at this time. Because if you would have gotten in and then you lost money, you'd be like, Oh, I got in the wrong time. So this is like your eyes into crypto. This is these indicators. I wouldn't go in it without it. So the next one, the third one down is the TSI. It stands for trend strength indicator. And for some reason, guys, I was talking on the phone when I was doing this, I guess. I just keep on spelling it wrong. So I'm so sorry. So that one where the red arrows down are coming in, it means it's saying it's going to continue to go down. Now, the signal line on this one, and all this is different quantitative analytical math that Joe has programmed into these. So all of these unique indicators are pulling different mathematical calculations, and it's utilizing Joe's extensive like 20 years in trading stocks and uh, Forex and everything under the sun. And from a lot of frustration, he's developed these mathematical indicators 
to safeguard his own investments. So the signal line is getting closer and tight and you can see it's really close. It's like sidelined. So I can't wait to jump into that. I want to look at that signal line and see if it's continuing to go if it's going to go down, but it is green right now, but it's like a sideline green. So it looks like there's probably some intraday movement in that that's keeping that green line alive, but it's tight. It's right on top of each other. When the gold and the green get tight like that, it's pretty much an indicator that, um, you know, things are going to switch. So it's either going to go down and go into um, red zone or may, may flip and go up, we'll see. And now the last one is my favorite volatility index. And you'll see that there's the upper box um, of the green area and the lower area. And that means overbought and oversold. But you also get this black number on the right hand side, it says 24.7. That number is really important because it shows you that if it's in 80 to 100, that's overbought, or if it's 20 to zero, that's oversold. So right now, it's not in either one. It's in what we call let the cake bake. It's in this waiting zone. So um, once you see Bitcoin get down to that oversold, that's a sure sign of, wow, time to, that's where I'm going to buy, okay? Now, when Bitcoin gets up to that upper green area of the volatility index, that's when you say, wow, this is really high. It's overbought. I better take profit soon. Or if not, I better have a lot of stamina to hold a long time because, you know, it doesn't stay up there in that zone too long. And nor does it stay in the bottom zone too long. So um, this year, definitely an indicator where if you really understand it and if you zone in on it and you tune into this, it's a take action zone. And uh, if you don't take action, you better be ready to hold for a while. Okay, so the next indicate the next chart is the Ethereum. So again, you can tap on the radar in the upper left hand area of your trading view once you have the radar added to it, and you can customize customize your time frames. So on the lower right, we can see that for Ethereum, for the four hour chart, it's going down. For the one day average, Ethereum is going up, but on a one week and a one month average, Ethereum is still going down. So again, if you're not intraday trading, then this is the time to just kind of wait on Ethereum. And here is Ethereum on a one week performance chart. So very similar to Bitcoin's, the early reversal is coming in. The trend has been just going down for the last three weeks. And it gives each one of those candlesticks or bars stands for one week. So then you have two weeks where the trend indicator was going down. The signal line has gone sideways, which is like a flat line. So it's just not doing anything. Um, and then you have the volatility index at 36.51. So this volatility index is uh, higher than Bitcoin. Um, Bitcoin was around the 20s, right? So that is Ethereum right now. But let's look at some other coins. So in the basket, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, Polygon, Cardano, Chainlink, Litecoin, Cosmos, Algorand, Harmony, Phantom, and Solana. And most of these coins can be found on Coinbase. Now we have more than these because our group that's been meeting for a while now, they've asked for other coins. So we've had some other coins put in our basket. And so this right here, you're going to see our watch list. So I'm going to give you a little heads up on the watch list. You can organize your watch list by percentage change, the amount changed in price, the last price, the symbol name. You can also add subsections to your watch list to better organize what is ready to buy versus what is ripe and ready to sell. And these coins are up for the day, but I always look for coins on the floor to be ready for the next low buy. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Now, uh, look at this um, analysis. I just took this right before this class started and I changed it into the percentage change category. So Algo is up 8%, CRV is up 3%, Adam's up 2.7%. Mana, we just talked about that, the metaverse coin, that's up 1.5% and Yasme is up 0.39%. And then I have this uh, organized by the trend strength indicator up for the week by using the radar and what is down for the 
um, what is down for the week. So even though those coins in the red zone are down for the week, um, their their dailies are are a little bit up. So that's a little positive. So may, maybe we have hit some floors, which will be exciting to see. So another part of trading view I wanted to teach you guys about is the crypto screener. So this is the only coins that were coded in green that were on the crypto screener as strong buys. Just note, this is not financial advice. And I personally don't buy and sell off just the crypto screener. But Dar Luna and GST were ones that were coming up as strong buys from the TradingView crypto screener. Okay, so here's just a quick crypto screener review. When you create a watch list in trading view, you color coat this flag on the left hand side of the coin or token. And when you come to your crypto screener, which is on the bottom left hand side of your trading view account, you can change the it says ticker symbol 13 matches. Change that ticker flag to whatever color you color coded your watch list, and all those coins will show up. And then you can change the time frame of what data you want to get this is set for one week and then the moving average rating you can click on that and it'll organize your coins by strong sell or strong buy all right and then you can sort by moving i would just explain that you can sort by moving average rating and you can sort by last price or by simple moving averages of 20 days 50 days or 200 days and the S and the B stand for strong sell or strong buy. So now we're gonna look at the indicators. So if you've got the crypto mastery bundle, then you have volatility, ERI, dynamic ATR, trend indicator, TSI, radar screener, and signal line. So we'll go a little bit deeper into what those are. So the radar 1.0, it's used to organize your watch list. It confirms trade progression, it shows four different chart times. It can be applied to multiple indicators. It allows you to see four plus time frame trend directions on one chart. Now the radar 1.0 turns four charts into one chart. So this particular example shows 60 minutes, four hours, one day, and one week. And you can customize your time frames by clicking on that little gear symbol. Once you put your cursor on the radar um, label on the left-hand side of your chart, the gear signal will show up. And you click on that and you can change the time frames to whatever you like. Now the other indicator is the trend indicator you guys just saw, and it's used to set alerts. So step one, the key will pop up to indicate there's a great chance that an upward trend is coming. So stay alert and get ready. Step two, the bell indicator pops up. It confirms the trend's direction. This means the upward direction is strong. You may wanna take action. And then step three, the numbers one through seven will confirm the trend direction with these numerical numbers. One, the number one is the beginning of the first bar or candlestick from which all buy conditions are met. And then the two to seven, it's the total number count of the present cycle. If buy conditions criteria are still met, the number count will then restart from the bell. So here's an example. So the key came in and then the bell alert came in and then one, two, three, four, dollar sign. That stands for number five, and it's purposely, Joe purposely put a dollar sign in there to remind you, if we've moved up this much, you really need to consider taking profit because what comes up goes down. And then you have a six, and then the money bag is a seven. And you could see, even in this example, where five had some momentum, it went up to six, so now you're like, okay, take some profit, if you don't take profit by six, you can see it went down a little bit to seven. All right. And then it and then it then it was like, okay, take profit. And then the key came in again, the bell came in again, and then it kept moving on an upward trend. But you could buy and sell a few times all the way up the hill, right? And and then that way you're retaining your profits. If you don't take any profit, if you just, you know, hedge your hedge and you just say, no, 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 I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait. That's on you, all right? But the system is telling you and it's reminding you uh, to take profit often. All right, so now we have the volatility index. It shows overbought or oversold conditions and it's used with shorter timeframes. 
And that's where I love that one because it teaches you how to buy low. The signal line is the third one, and it shows trend direction confirmation when the green linear average crosses the red. That was that, that green line and red line with the gold line. And then you have the TSI, which is trend strength indicator, and it shows the early trend reversal when the green plots start, and it shows early exit reversal when the red plots start. Then you have the ERI, early reversal indicator, and the green arrow up means the conditions for a soon upward trend are present, and this is the one I call the Houdini, and the red arrow down means the conditions for a soon downward trend are present. It could get pretty annoying sometimes because you're so excited, like your coin is going up and then you see the red arrow. And you're like, no, I didn't want to take profit yet. But it is what it is, guys. You know, you got it like it's like it's almost like you're outside playing as a kid and your mom's like, come inside. It's dinner time. You're like, no, because you just want to keep you just want to keep seeing those wins. But the reality is that early reversal Houdini indicator kind of keeps you in check and in a reality check. like. Hey, remember, things go down, so use it how you like it, but uh, watch it, watch it. So here is the example, and this is not today. This is just, I use this one as an example. So you can see the early reversal indicator on this one where the red arrow comes down. I didn't talk about all true range, so the ATR, we can talk about that live. And then we have the trend indicator where you see the key, the bell, and then no and no one came in and you could see that you know that early reversal said hey look things look like it's going down and then the one didn't appear and that happens so this is why collectively you want to look at all these indicators simultaneously because they're all pulling different math and this is all from stress and strain that joe has survived in the market over 20 something years of winning and losing and sometimes it's those losses that kick us in the boo hiney that trigger us to make more smarter indicators to avoid certain situations and repeaters, right? So then you have the trend strength indicator and that one, you can see it was moving upward and then it's like slightly moving down. So there's a visual indicator that you got, there's some, uh, some uh, blockage in the force of the moving up force. And then you have the signal line and that's where the green and the gold come in and then the volatility index. And on the right hand side, you have this, um, I love if you have your indicator labels on, it'll give you that lightning bolt. Or if you don't have the indicator labels on, you get like a clean chart, it'll just be on that black zone. It'll tell you what number it's at. So we're going to go into volatility index really quick. Here's the volatility index explanation. It's my favorite. So the volatility indicator measures how far the coin stretches away from its mean price. In English, that means. I take profit in the green area <laughs> and take note to the numbers on the right overbought is the number 80 to 100 so you could set an alert to tell you if the coin you're watching gets into the 80 to the 100 zone and that way you know it's time to tap the trigger or the sell button because you're you're getting to a point where it needs to be sold i do not buy when a coin is in the volatility index green zone because it's 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 ripe. It's like you're not going to um, – it's time to pick the fruit on the tree. You know what I mean? You're not waiting uh, another three months to let it harvest. It's harvested. It's ready to pick or it's going to go rotten. Um, and then I buy when it's in the red zone. And you saw when I showed you that, if you, if you zoned in on that, when I showed you the Bitcoin chart, it's close to the red zone. It didn't go in there on the one week analysis of Bitcoin. I'm like, oh, come on, hit the red zone. Cause I'm just waiting and like having USD held on the sidelines, it just sucks. And I'm just like, I wanna buy, I wanna buy. So that 20 line, I'll set some alerts saying, tell me when, you know, this is in the red zone. Tell me when it's 20 to zero. That's when I like to buy because it's like getting a house on auction. You wanna buy it when it's on the floor, as long as it's a good coin. Right. OK, so now this is your time. This is all about you and the Q&A about what you uh, what questions you guys have. And um, Joe is here, so it would be great to have Joe tell us about what's coming up with that uh, interest rate meeting, Joe. 
Yes. Uh, hi, everyone. Hi, Susie. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> yeah. So it's a two-day meeting, and uh, tomorrow uh, they're going to give their decision. So right now the market is very hostile, and uh, I think we're going to probably uh, shift in a big way once we get this in a you know this decision tomorrow. You know, um, a couple coins in particular. I uh, was just over here going through stuff while you were going over the news that I thought it would be good to talk about um, before we we go in here on the Bitcoin. Uh, like if we go to the Luna on the daily. All right. I was just going to try to move this one down for one second. Sorry. I wanted to get a chart where we could have um, the radar showing, but it's kind of maxing itself out. Just so if we have Moonstream people that just have, oh, so, all right, well, okay, all right, so Luna, yeah, Luna was, um, Luna came up on some of those, so Luna's on Binance, guys. Oh, we had talked about Luna before, like we put a now, star there. Change, yeah, now he changed it to the daily, because what's happening is the market is, is like what's in a, a transition. So we're looking for all these uh, potential clues uh, for which way the market is going. And um, with what's happening here this week, um, uh, right now, this is a, a, a clue that presented itself right here. So that's why I just wanted to start with this one, because we got the uh, first uh, clue, which is on the ERI. And uh, it's a clue, and it's early, right? Um, but this is one we want to set our alerts for because the volatility index is down in the red. Ugh, yes, beautiful. And uh, what we actually need to make this work is we need the TSI. So this one here is dangerously close to maybe possibly triggering. And we want to keep an eye on this and set our alerts um, because this could be something that develops within the next uh 72 hours, like once we get this de decision, you know, because the markets are smart and, and they're not going to move before the decision. Everybody's going to wait until, you know, the buzzer goes off. And then we'll probably start to see uh, a different market condition to finish out the trading week. So um, as we're coming into uh, the next couple of days, and, and Friday we also have some big reports out, um, the best thing that we can do is look at the clues, look for the clues, and let the market come to us. So we're going to talk about a few different things, but um, this in particular, um, which is uh, something that's time sensitive, because it's just we just got that ERI yesterday, Susie, and that's why I'm kind of bringing that up because tomorrow possibly maybe the TSI turns or or the next day your next alert goes. Um, so we'll keep uh, an eye out on this one. I'm going to say this one is um, the TSI. So transcend indicator is up. So let's see if we have. Um, I don't know if we have a green arrow going up for the. Now I'll just say this. All right, so guys, what I do is in the alert name, I usually just kind of buy, put my own explanation in the message area because if you just start set an alert name, um, whatever is in here is going to be sent to you in your email. And if you don't understand it, then you're not going to understand it. And you may not even know what it is that it's actually telling you uh, to buy. So just to save time, I like to just make sure that you have a message in there. So I just set an alert for the trend for the TSI, and then I'll set an alert for the signal line. And I'll just say, um, when I'm telling myself to buy this, I'm telling myself to buy it, but I'm not going to go all in on one indicator. I'm just going to just portion whatever I would want to invest in Luna in in different increments. I may buy it on five different occasions 
as it's moving up by Luna, and I'm going to say signal line, line up. So you would just need to say whatever you need to, to say to yourself so that you understand it. Actually, I'm going to just, because that message is going to come. Okay, create, create, and then, so um, I just put in a paper trade too while um, Joe is explaining this. And so that's another way that I kind of test it. So we just go in a little bit on a paper trade. And then that way, like right now, I did that because it's so low on the volatility. And then once that paper trade goes to a profit, that's another indicator. You're like, okay, nice, nice. Because currently it is going down according to these indicators. But, um, and this is an early reversal indicator. So it doesn't mean always immediately. So, uh, and this is the one day chart. So it's great. Thanks, Joe, for that. Let's see if we have any questions so far. Fiorella says, can we please look at GMT? Is that okay, Joe, if we look at that? Sure. Uh, GMT and Fiorella, just make sure that this is, wow, the right one. Okay, so GMT looks like it's a new coin. Um, on trading view, guys, you could always click down here, and um, when you're on a chart, it'll tell you a little bit about it. And uh, there's not much to see about GMT. Here's the range. Ask her. Uh, ask her what exchange. Um, you know, maybe it's she's good, she's on a different exchange that has data. Yeah. Let's see. Or check Fiora. the key coin. Yeah, I will. I'll. I'll well. Well, on a one-hour basis, do you want me to find a nice one-day chart for you, Joe, to look at? Well, first, let's see if we can have the data that we need on the daily. All right, so let's go for Binance daily. All right, so on okay, the that's daily, a little bit better. but not really, because it's the early reversals coming down. Um, let's see what else. Maybe, maybe GMT on like QCoin or something. Let's see. Mm, that's kind of an interesting thing. It says GMT, but the description is not so perfect there. Maybe Gemini. Yeah, I would say, you know, being that we've seen that ERI um, print on there, that uh, maybe you might have to. Uh, Wait a little bit and let things develop with this and set your alerts. If you go to the uh, the four hour, maybe we have something there. But the, the daily is coming off of that. Oh, let me see here on the four hour. Okay. So look, uh, on the four hour chart, you know, we do have it turning up right here on the short term, right? But remember, this is a four hour chart. So you, so you don't actually have the data. Uh, that you really need, but you can still um, look to position yourself accordingly off of this. I mean, it would be better if you had the daily because a daily represents each trading day. And then when we're lo doing our uh, projection or our analysis, we're looking for um, follow through for the next two or three days on a decision. When we're on a four hour, a four hour is a little bit faster than a daily. And the decisions that are made on a full hour may only be good for a 24-hour period. So I would say that if you are in this, um, it looks good right now at the present. But um, keep an eye on this, and uh, especially in 24 hours, to see if the market actually follows through. If it stalls and starts to go sideways, it's because you don't have the, the that steam behind you from the higher time frames. So, um, that that would be my my response to that. Let's see where it is and to be where it was. So it went in the last thirty four, well five days, it went down eighteen percent. Okay, so we're on a four hour chart, so it's not like well, it went up forty nine percent in two days. So I see why the excitement's there. So there was some activity 
on April 18th that probably um, triggered some excitement, right? Look at this. Now, here's here's the thing, Joe. This Keltner band is just so key to me these days is that Fiorella, when it's down here, that's like low, 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 low. And then you have all this room to grow until this upper blue band, but it's in the middle still. So I wouldn't have great expectations of it. I mean, maybe jump from this point right here, which is, well, you can, you can look like right there. So at 3.42 and then 3.85. So those are the expectations. So, I mean, this, this has them way above movement. So what, do, what would you say to her about, you know, looking at these bands to take into consideration as the lowest buy zone versus highest? Like, do you have a preference, Joe? Like, I like to buy in a low band, but do you do you pay attention to these bands when you're in the purchase place? Well, I, I mean, I focus in more on the setups. So the thing is, is that, like, you, you want to remember that when you're on short-term charts like this, when you're up and you're up in profits, you really want to take a profit when you're up, you know. And um, on this particular example here, you know, I can see over here, like on the 25th, like right there, Susie, like when it started to trend up higher with the upper band, right? Um, and uh, the trend was confirming. It's just that like when we come into May, it looks like it lost all its steam to me, right? So yeah. right now it's it's you know you, it goes back into where I was saying is, is that you can't really force a trade to happen, and sometimes when you're on these faster charts, it it may be easier, you know, to um, you know, uh, whereas is that it may look one way, and but the, when the market stalls, and you might be saying, well, why is the market stalling? Well, it's stalling because it just doesn't have the the power uh, or, or the steam behind it to, you know, to follow through. And 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 really, that's because it just doesn't have it on the higher time frame, Susie. And, and also the data. I mean, it must. It's it's just recently been put onto trading view, so there's not tons of data to go through to see past performance for for. Um, the I mean for the indicators to pull the math for one week and a month month to do a a long term yeah, analysis. I, yeah, yeah, and and the best thing is is really is looking for, you know, kind of like what we went over, like like a another good market, Susie, which is uh, IMX. And, and I just wanted to just go over this again because you can set your alert with the ERI. So that you don't miss anything in here, but there's so many of these crypto markets that if you that you can find something that you have the technology in your favor, and that's all I I guess I I like to say is sometimes when we we want to participate in these markets, it's easier to look at the shorter time frames and and think that we we actually have more percentage chance of winning on the trade because it's a five minute or it's a 15 minute but sometimes those charts can be a uh, look illusional or be an illusion because they the market stalls so it's like we're looking at the five minute susie and it looks perfect or, or it can be even a, a one hour but then everything slows down and it stalls and then you you know and you're trying to figure out well why is it stalling but it, it's mainly you don't have that higher that wave behind you. So if, if you look around a little bit, here's another example where is that we just have something fresh trigger on the ERI, and then now you have that extra uh, wave or the extra, uh, I would say, more odds in your favor to be successful or get follow through from the bars. So we don't know if the market's gonna follow through, but this is an example where the market come to us, it's on the daily, um, we have the volatility index says yes. We just got the TSI that says yes. We got the ERI. And um, next would be the signal line. So, um, I, you know, these are just different things that I, I wanted to kind of start off with today, Susie, because if you notice, uh, I'm showing you other coins 
different coins other than Bitcoin. Because the thing is, is that, you know, you got this whole crypto universe is like, you know, we're looking at the stars and, and there's more to the universe than just the moon. And the moon plays an important part of the universe. But man, you know, we want to go to all the planets, Pluto, Mars, Mercury. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just see five system. dollars on the IMX while you were talking <laughs> on, a, <laughs> on a paper trade. So guys, like there's paper trading. So you could, um, you know, you could. So these are some old paper trades that I had in there. But you can see, like, you could just test it out, use the system. So I just went in and it's all fake money. Okay, so it's just paper trading. So you could do that. I'm going in to check this out. And right now we have the TSI up. We're waiting on the signal line. We're waiting on the trend to come in. And if you want to inch your way in. And the volatility in my point perspective, you know how I feel about that. Low. But here's the thing with the IMX. It stays a long time in that downward zone. So I was like that that and there's this is a this is a fairly new coin. Yeah. Looks like it just came in on December 9th, 2021. But that's just for that means it just came into Coinbase. So, um, you know, on that last point, I want to say the fundamentals of that last coin could be really good. It's just that maybe some of the marketing of that coin hasn't gotten out yet, or maybe the technological development hasn't released yet, causing um, massive market movement. So we are doing technicals versus. I know a lot of you guys are working with Mike and Moonstream and they're doing the fundamentals. So you're getting a really good balanced, um, I think, learning system in your brain to say, okay, right, fundamentals and technicals. And then collectively, you know, with that in mind, with the with the interest rates, right, Joe, <laughs> you'll be able to like kind of get the rhythm of the system. Yeah, yeah. We'll see if we have any more questions. So Fiora says, got it. Waiting for a nice low price. Haven't bought any yet. Just keeping an eye on it. Thank you both for the input. Andrew said, um, he said, it's also important to have a plan in place. You need to have a good trading strategy all around. This includes money management and also having a plan for a stop loss and what you will do if the trade doesn't work out. So if you're going to enter on the key or the bell, you're going to stay in until the five or the seven. Are you, and he put a question mark, are you going to exit if it goes down right away or wait out? It will be a good idea to have a stop loss in place and get out early if it doesn't work like it's working out. That's Andrew the Ninja. Um, I think stop losses are personal preference. I don't do um, stop losses anymore because I have so much faith in what I'm purchasing that, and I have stamina and longevity. So I, I'm, I'm really kind of like all into making money only. <laughs> so I mean, I could do a stop loss if as long as I'm in profit. Okay, let's just say. I'm okay with putting a stop loss for myself if I'm already at profit. So I would say like, if you get to a place where you're at a profit, then then that would make sense to me. What, what's your feeling about a stop loss, Joe? Well, um, a stop loss is very tricky because in this business, you have uh, HFTs, which are high frequency trading, and these are robots that can manipulate the price so if you put a stop loss out there um, these algorithms um, from the brokerages uh, have the ability you know i believe to see your stop loss and also move the market or manipulate price in a way to um, hit it and take you out of the market so in my opinion i'd rather buy less and a lot of times you hear me talk about scale in scale in scale out scale out because I rather buy less and if I'm wrong then I can reposition myself um, rather than for me to go all in and then I'm I'm wrong uh, you know and then I, I, I can't I'm out of the game 
you know, and that's part of winning too is, is to be able to keep yourself into the game. And uh, when it comes to stop losses, it's it's for my for me, like I say, I'd rather buy less Susie. So my answer would be no. I, I wouldn't put a stop loss. I would buy less um, because uh, I know that the market makers they can manipulate market price. And and I and I'm I've been in different case points where there's people that I know that went and placed a stop, and the market hit their stop, and then the market moved. And then now here you go. You know, you're right about the market, but the market outsmarts you. But it wasn't the market outsmarts you, is that there's an algorithm that these brokers have, and that algorithm, you know, was able to uh, target your order because your decision to place a stop. So it, it all depends on the trader and the, and the risk tolerance level of that trader. Um, either way, you can be right. Uh, as long as you're comfortable with the decision you make. Yeah, so, I, you know, I think that's huge information. So it's almost like you're telling the universe this is what you want, and it's like the universe is giving you what you want. Just uh, I, I would I would set I wouldn't set a stop loss. I'd sell a I'd set a sell. I'd say sell at this price. So that's what I was just doing. Um, Nicola said, can you show me how to do a paper trade? So I'm on a Mac. I'm on a um, the laptop. I'm going to double tap my keyboard and I'm going to click trade. I'm going to buy algo. And okay, I'm, I'm going to go crazy on this. Well, I, I really give me one sec before I'm going to do this because I really want to win. <laughs> I'm going to go into settings and I'm going to change my time frame to like one minute, three minute, uh, five minutes. Because I'm going to try to see if I, we can find something where I'm going to make money like right now. Okay. So basically, so one minute's up, three minutes down, five minutes is up. So there's a chance I may make some money. I can buy and, and sell in like, well, now it's going down. Okay, well, well let's see. We can get in a pickle. Okay, so I'm going to just say I'm going to buy the market right here. And um, wait, let me just, let me do it again. So I'm not going to mess with that. So I'm going to double tap. I'm going to trade. I'm going to buy the market. Now it's going down on three minutes, so it may not work. I'm gonna take a profit. Well, actually, no, I'm not gonna even say I'm gonna take a profit. I'm just gonna buy and we'll see what happens. No, wait a minute. Okay, hold on. Watch, let me do it again. Double tap, trade by market. Just make sure you say market, all right? And I'm just gonna tell the system I'm buying whatever the price is. Okay, so now I've got it bought. Now, I'm going to watch right here and it's going to be green if I'm in profit and I'm going to X out to sell. So that's negative. I'm down $10. Okay. So that's um, in a trade. Now you can go into your paper trading account and you could look at all of your trades and you could also sell right here. So when this goes into a green, I'm just going to press an X. And okay, so I'm down $60 and down $40. But this is really good. I'd rather you guys lose money on the paper trade, learning the rhythm of the market, learning the signals, learning the indicators than doing it with your real money. Um, so with this, so you can see three minutes is going down, five minutes is going down. So I typically would like to be in a shorter time frame if I'm just literally like trading in a minute. Uh, but the shorter time frames you trade, the less percentage of uh, of a commission that you're going to make or a percentage up. It doesn't move that much in a minute or in a second. But I, I did go in with a large sum of coins so that I could dramatically see a difference here. So at this being said, that's not really moving so much. But now that I have this chart down in the three minute, I can go through some other charts and I can say, okay, well, what's up for the one minute? What's going up? I could do something different. If, if something's all going down, I could short the market. Um, and make but, money but also, too, we're running out of time, Susie. Okay. So yeah. it's already so one o'clock. All right. So that that's essentially it. So. Um, you want to look at something where you basically, um, if you're going to be doing that, where all, all signs are going up or you have to short the market, which we can't technically do in the U S but if you're out of U S maybe I'll do it. All right. So I can't find one right now. That's like really 
ripe and ready to, to produce an income to show you a successful buy sell in two minutes. Maybe this one. Okay, let's see. Trade, buy, market. Let's see. Joe, give me one more second. Oh, let me see if this will work. So it's going up on a one, a three, and a five. So, and then you have the early reversal here, but I'm on a three minute chart. And maybe it's taking time to kind of like, I'm going to just brief. Oh, oh my gosh. Wait, wait, oh. Well, what, what one was I just on, guys? Darn it. Uh, well, here we go. We go, go to your um, paper trading. And, and I should be able to find that one. I think it was just at 100,000. Profit. Okay, so I'm just gonna make this smaller. Okay, right there. So I'm gonna X out of this. So it's like three hundred thousand dollars that we just made. So then you could go into your trading journal and or your account history. These are all fake trades, guys. Okay. Well, they're not fake trades. They're real trades. But so we just made three hundred thousand dollars. But I bought an extensive amount of coins. Okay. So these are just a bunch of wins, I think, you know, but that's how like fakery can happen if someone's saying, yeah, it's it's working or I'm making money right now. So Ren is what we made that on. Okay, so Joe says we gotta get sticking to time. So that was it, no more questions, Joe. Was there anything else you wanted to show everybody? Um, Really, if you just go back to the Bitcoin, because tomorrow, yeah. like, you know, we're all watching this tomorrow. This in particular. Yeah, you want to go to like a day chart. Or yeah. A week. Or... It's just I just wanted to show like the volatility index is down there. So <gasps> right now we don't have the trend yet, and we don't have the TSI, but you can set your alerts for that. Um, the the that volatility index is one clue. Um, but coming in here the next couple of days, if we could start to see maybe possibly the TSI turn, it, it may come right out of this hole strong, you know? So it, it's consolidating, like forming this wedge pattern. So, you know, I haven't been talking about this because uh, the market has been in this sidewinder range and uh, it's really <laughs> been... <laughs> sidewinder range, I love that. Yeah, where, where it's one of them, you know, case points where you just want to just let the market come to you, like I, I always uh, say, and you really can't do too much. But you know, we're going to keep an eye on this because uh, once we get past this decision, this might be something else that uh, starts to come alive. You know, because we've been in this downtrend since the, since April, we're we're like in a a forty day downtrend, like four week downtrend rather. All right, so I just set my signal line for buy Bitcoin. Signal line is green. This is not a one day chart, you guys. So ding, ding, ding goes my phone. Hopefully today or tomorrow. Well, we're on a one day chart, so tomorrow. But as far as I'm concerned, like I would say this is ready to go. So, and then you can, um, the one thing I like about this one day chart is down in the bottom Bollinger Bands. Or, or sorry, Keltner bands, the, the low area for the one day at least. It's great. This is good. I mean, I feel on a one day basis, we hit the floor, right? <laughs> yeah. We got the floor. Cause like the last time we hit the floor, it was down here. It doesn't stay <laughs> on the floor too long. One, two, three, four. You know? So, hey. Again, if you're following the indicators, you get in and you get out. But if you just want to go long term, just stick with the one monthers. Just go with the one month and then you know follow that. Depending on your your pace and your place, find your particular pace. So um, on a one month basis, we're not floored yet. <laughs> I don't think we have in a long time. Not since April first of two thousand nineteen. All right. <laughs> You guys, thanks so much for coming today. We appreciate you. Um, I've put a bunch of stuff in the Facebook group. 
I put the slides to this webinar in the Facebook group. It's Crypto Mastery in Facebook. And um, I don't know if any of you guys need to renew your indicators, but um, there's always an opportunity to renew them for on a monthly basis if that's best for you. And we love working with you. We love your questions. So please um, let us know if there's anything we need to do for you. We have Andrew, Dave, Fiorella, Gabriella, Giuliano, Jay, Jan, KS, Nicola, Scott, and Terry. So we've got a big crowd today. And um, we're looking forward to hearing some results. And if you guys ever you know, get some good um, trades in and you're making some money, let us know, okay? We're here, we're here for you. Nicola said, thank you, very slick presentation. Oh, that's so sweet, thanks, Nicola. And Giliana said, thank you. You're welcome, guys. Yeah, and Fiorella good luck trading. Said, yeah, Fiorella said, always great education, thank you. Thanks, Fiorella. We really, really love you guys. And um, I would love to unmute you one day. Maybe we could do like a Facebook party or something. And if you guys are on Facebook, let me know. Um, Nicola says, James says hi. Hi, James. All right, guys. Have a good week and listen to the um, the interest rates so you know what to do, how to pivot. All right. And uh, looking forward to seeing you guys get rich. All right, I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> Bye. All right. Bye. Bye.